Welcome to this original golf cast series for the casual player and whiskey drinker. Your passions are being defined. How can you distinguish the difference between the different types of whiskey? That's the, probably my, my number one question is, is how do I start to notice the differences? Well, once you start to understand that scotches and irishes are made with predominantly malt, bourbons are predominantly corn, there are rye whiskeys, there are wheat whiskeys, and there's other brands and there's ver like conversions of, once you start to understand the main grain and what region it comes from, you can really start to anticipate what each one is gonna taste like. So to give you an idea, well, number one, you gotta practice. Practice, practice, practice. Try different whiskeys. Go to your local ABC liquor store, package store, whatever you call it, and buy sample bottles and try sample bottles because they're relatively cheap. Cheaper than going to a bar, a whiskey bar is great, but if you go and get some sampler bottles, you can try a bunch of different whiskeys that way. Also, there's a group called Blind Barrels. If you really get into it, they send you quarterly four sample packs of whiskeys that you can blind, taint test, and really do. I get no money from them, but they're a spectacular group. I would really encourage you to go find the Blind Barrels guys if this is as we're starting to progress through. But to really start to understand, if you get a malted whiskey, malted whiskeys tend to be very floral, very fruity. I would even say kind of like think of oats and think of grain, like, like bakery kind of tones to it right but again you get a lot of floral you get a lot of fruit that's kind of what a malt does so malts to me you, by nose by taste you can usually pull out a malt pretty quickly not always but pretty quickly bourbons right americans uh, war horse for the whiskey side is 51 percent corn plus that you're going to get a lot of sweet you're going to get a lot of vanilla you're going to get some oak but corn is the corn process is sweet I mean, again, you're gonna get the vanilla from the oak barrel. You're gonna get lots of vanilla. Mm, I really like my bourbons. We, we have scotches, right? So scotch is a meat, but a lot is, is a malt, but they have something called peat. So malted barley is a grain. Well, barley is a grain, right? When they malt it, they actually tease it to sprout. They wet it. And once it sprouts, they hit it with heat to kill it off. And that's why it becomes malted. That releases enzymes, makes the the distilling process easier. When they do it in Scotland, and even in Ireland has some of these as well, they burn peat um, to stop the malting process so you get this smoky flavor. So kind of a campfire-y flavor inside the whiskey. So there is peated scotches, but when you think of scotch, a lot of times you're thinking fruity, you're thinking citrus, you're thinking floral, and also a lot of times they're gonna have this peat tone. A rye whiskey, which I'm a huge fan of, you're gonna get really sweet up, up in the front. Different than a bourbon sweet, it's more of a sugary, honey, honey sweet, and then it got this spice note behind it, like this peppery, baking spice tone to it. Again, I'm a huge fan of rye. And then the final one I would say, kind of thinking wise, is Irish whiskeys. What Irish whiskeys do differently than scotches is they triple distill. So typically when you run it through the still, most distilleries run it through twice to ramp up the ABV, alcohol by volume. Uh, when it comes out the still the first time, it's gonna be pretty low in alcohol count, but when they run it through the second time, they can get that number up around 160, 180 proof. Um, so get it really, you know, 90%, 85, 90% alcohol. So that's really cool, but what the Irish do is they run it through three times. Not so much to ramp up the amount of alcohol in the distillant, more so that the more times you run it through the, the still, the smoother the, the grain becomes. So you take away possibly some complexities, but you get a smoothness. That's why when you try Irish whiskeys, they tend to be a little smoother, a little friendlier, much easier to kind of start off your journey inside of the whiskey world. So that's kind of what I would say, kind of starting to see the differences. But again, the number one way to do it is practice, practice, practice. Try whiskeys when you can. When you're at a friend's house, you've never had that type, you know, hey, can I try Widow Jane? Hey, can I try Telemador? Can I try? Row and Co. Can I try Glenn Fittich? Like you know, ask friends of yours, and again, start to start to go in with an open mind. Start to go try to find some notes, and then, like I said, just enjoy the chase of finding new flavors. <laughs>